You can see me now. So, oh, he's end up put my stuff when I start working on an idea. I I, I use this uh, disc binder method of putting together my notes um, this one isn't one of my books this is the one that I use for just uh, writing stuff down that you've seen before where I write down stuff and you guys watch me uh, ramble on about uh, RPG crap but uh, you know it's basically the same idea the notebooks that I normally have for my role-playing game um, have the leather bound uh, covers on them which are nice this is the arc system so just in case you're wondering what what this disc um, binder kind of thing is all about um, it I'll just show you some preliminary um, you get a of these they cost like about 30 bucks Canadian and sturdy monster of a uh, unit here uh, this you use it's a it's a paper paper hole punch and it punches the uh, the grooves like you see here on these uh, on this printout and of course you've seen this on the uh, last video um, the layout for these um, specs on each of the system planets. So now I usually just write everything down on the current situation. One planet at a time takes up basically these two pages and I don't go any further than that. So all my notes basically contained on a spread that I can put down behind a screen if I wanted to work behind a screen sometimes I don't sometimes I'll just have you know the book open and uh, with with my notes I'll have uh, this maybe as a um, if it's a known system I'll have it as basically on the table as a rough kind of handout so uh, people have this kind of information on the fly um, cause you know, uh, you can gain this kind of information if, if you have access to a personal computer, especially in this kind of a, a technology, uh, you know, in this case, uh, peak level 14 is what we were looking at. Let's go. Here's the original world. And, uh. And all this pertinent information here. So, you know, as I transport my books, I will obviously have this clipped into my uh, binder as such with all the notes for this one world on either side. And then I'll pop it out. And I'm not I'm not using cheap paper here. I'm using the more expensive stuff for, for printing. This is a little thicker. I usually use about 32 pound paper when uh, printing this stuff. And you see my printer does a really killer job. It's a, it's a uh, Canon um, laser printer. So I, uh, and it prints very nicely. It's very crisp. And uh, the ink I get is from a distributor in uh, the province over from me in Sask uh, Saskatchewan. And, uh, I get it like pretty much if I order it it'll be here like within two days so uh, and the, it's cheap it's super cheap uh, the amount of money I, I pay for three 
um, cartridges uh, easily um, is under the original um, cannon cartridge cost. So. so, with my notes at hand and my uh, clutch pencil in order to kind of rough out some ideas uh, and you know I go over over everything with like a, a felt uh, pen sharpie pen later if I feel like it <laughs> sometimes I just write stuff out in pencil and, and keep it as pencil so I can you know erase or modify it later and uh, let's adjust this mic and I just kind of go over the uh, rough idea of what this um, planet is. And I kind of think about what would be cool uh, to situate on this planet. And this obviously is going to be stuff that the players do not know, but will be possibly uncovered if they uh, choose to uh, investigate it. So um, some of the things I was thinking about was, um, you know, we have this, we have this planet with, um, and I, like I was saying, it's, it's got a, a few mountainous regions, you know, that kind of poke out into like the higher, uh, regions of the atmosphere where they've built their city structures on these mountain peaks so we'll have these large um, mountainous regions with these plateau like structures with their little uh, landing ports and stuff like that and uh, down below in the valleys uh, is higher density concentration of uh, of gases which um, to like an off-worlder would be detrimental in their health if they stayed down there for too long however you know with the, with the aid of, of breathing devices and in and, and, and the situation of the native population here the natives themselves uh, can go down there and breathe in this atmosphere so they some of them won't uh, depending on how many generations they've been down there or you know their makeup of genetics they survive quite well down on the uh, on the lower um, on the lower valley bottoms and uh, can work just fine without a, an environmental suit so, what I was thinking was, you know, um, all this is going to be basically covered in kind of like a miasma of gas, you know, cloud cover. So, it's, it's a case of what's the mystery of what's down there, you know. We're going to have um, probably some sort of uh, wild kind of vegetation that uh, grows down there. And that kind of stuff so we could have like uh, uh, ideas for uh, floor, flora and fauna where um, you know you, know, you kind of have to think about you know what what kind of structures would uh, you know grow in a uh, well, basically a canopied area. So you could have jungles down there that uh, have really huge broad leaf. Uh, just writing this down, broad leaf. Um, I prefer, though, to do this on computer because now I have really good text to speech. I mean, speech to text. And. Uh, and uh, it works quite well. So instead of me writing down these kinds of notes, I just say them out loud as as I'm as I'm uh, kind of contemplating ideas for this. So uh, and then plop down uh, little sticky notes everywhere on my uh, 
on my mythic archive there. So flora fauna, so I'm just gonna rough it out because this isn't any kind of campaign, but you can use it yourself if you want. Um, Cause I won't use this. Um, this this is kind of just an example. I've gone out of my way to go ahead and create this stuff to give you an example of how I create a uh, campaign. So broadleaf, we might have uh, stuff like uh, types of uh, snakes or um, yeah, maybe snakes, snake like. Um, I mean, we could go with like blood suckers and stuff like that as well, you know, um, but it, it depends. So it's still kind of vague, but I, um, you know, these notes here kind of give, give you, um, you know, a basic foundation to, uh, key upon by just looking at it. Um, I was also thinking since this, uh, this is all like covered in like deep mist there I'm gonna I'm gonna have an idea of uh, maybe an ancient uh, ancient ruins kind of um, kind of Aztec kind of kind of stuff Aztec Maya civilization ish kind of weird stuff um And uh, from a, a, a way forgotten time, like possibly way before uh, the atmosphere got so thick here and uh, overran by uh, its cloud cover, it probably were um, an ancient race that, uh, you know, viewed the stars, you know, and set up their ancient ruins to uh, observe, like, uh, like you know, um, astronomical uh, observatories so and uh, you might want to think about how this race had uh, evolved maybe they were um, kind of weird uh, ape simians maybe so we'll write that down ape simian race um, and, uh, they might have had, you know, gleanings into, like, special technologies, maybe, uh, crystal technology, crystal tech, which, um, is more kind of, you know, more prehistoric kind of <laughs> crystal tech so it could be interesting there might even be glimmers of of this ancient race still lingering there might be a uh, uh, lingering existing pockets it's kind of like Bigfoot big foot sighting all right so this this will give you some kind of interesting insight of where my brain goes sometimes um so yeah i mean who would have thought this is where i was going with this planet right it's a it's high tech level and uh, we're putting in stuff in here that's uh, that's just totally out of whack, out of out of left field here in, in, on this planet as well. Um, and uh, you know, maybe some of these uh, you know lowlanders, lowlanders, lowlander. That could be a term. Uh, being used to the uh, those who dwell in here which are more uh, poor uh, or working class 
as opposed to these uh, people that live on the mountaintops and enjoy the uh, cushy life of existence and kind of put on the face of the planet basically as you know th as the uh, ruling class of this uh, of this world the ruling bureaucracy because uh, yeah this government type is a civil service bureaucracy so it's really embedded in itself kind of like you know the deep state is uh, but we won't talk about that <laughs> But you get where I'm going here, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're using an open mind to, to the ideas here. So, and of course, I'm, I'm just drawing kind of little bits of, of ideas here for, uh, you know, um, the sake of retaining memory, you know, because uh, I, want, I want to make sure I, I remember uh, stuff. So we're going to have, you know, ancient... We'll, we'll make these pyramidical py pyramid kind of things, but we'll have like crystals uh, along the sides of them. So they'll look really strange and, and bizarre. Though. Some of them will be glowing when they become uh, uh, enabled. And maybe in some ways we'll have this uh, crystal technology fairly powerful. So um, if somebody does manage to um, uncover the secrets of these ancient um, crystal uh, pyramids, uh, they would unleash a very powerful beam weapon uh, piercing the cloud and going into uh, space, possibly, you know, aiming at a possible um, potential invasion. Because um, in the descriptions here, we, we do have uh, occupancies here. Obviously, these uh, occupancies of uh, Europripi and uh, Tainat, the... Uh, uh, these two systems here uh, are obviously being occupied by um, the pact, which is off in this direction. So um, the pact is going to be more um, aggressive. Pact, aggressive. So any, any spies from the pack will be uh, infiltrating uh, Kyre here, which is the, the system, Kyre. We'll be in, infiltrating it in, in an aggressive manner and uh, in order to overtake it, uh, just as it has done with the... Uh, um, places here. Now, um, I noticed that this uh, Tech 7 area with a huge, um, it's got a big uh, population. Um, that one, and I mean like like a fairly, fairly substantial population, that one there um, hasn't been taken over. So they might be in some sort of a uh, uh, struggle right now, possibly. And uh, there might be uh, a, a, a storyline that I could put in that there's a, some, um, a native from this uh, Tator, ta, tator, 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 tator. Like I say, I'm going to have to go ahead and write down a glossary, uh, if like a... Uh, um, so you can uh, phonetically um, say the words all the time. So I'll probably um, write out phonetically how I'm going to say uh, Kyre. So I would write that down. So I always use consistently the same, um, same word. And uh, I would work that out with each of these systems too. Because I, I didn't make any of these systems and uh, to pronounce some of them will be kind of 
a little weird. Like this one was uh, O cell, O cell. So that could be, or uh, or maybe it's also. It depends. Uh, once you have an idea of what you want to name those places, keep it the same. So uh, phonetically write it out so that you keep on using it phonetically properly and you don't confuse your players all the time. So um, we got some cool ideas here propping up and um, maybe an idea of, uh, you know, further on that we could use having a native from this uh, system here, which is fighting off uh, aggressive packed uh, dealings and uh, has come to the planet of Kyre in, in order to kind of warn uh, someone or get help uh, about uh, what's going on on their world. Um, that could be a lead in on, with, the, with the characters in some way, uh, which could lead them to like maybe, uh, maybe requisition uh, arms or something or get a, you know, try to procure some sort of a arms deal and then uh you know ship weapons to uh to that uh to that system and uh possibly make themselves a whole lot of money and uh and herald themselves as heroes to this large population here I and mean, with a, a b type starport and uh and a huge population base it could be an advantage advantageous to the uh, to the players as a as a port of uh, um, you know as a port of refuge if anything was to go wrong <laughs> they would have friends there so um, other things I would think about is the current system of government here we could have uh, um, for the lowlander, They will have their own unions, so we'll have a union idea. So the union will be um, maybe something to do with uh, uh, mist or fog or something, or 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 you know the. Maybe because, you know, they maybe they have something to do with breathing or something or, or something that, that relates to their their advantageous situation, you know, of being able to breathe down there and stuff like that. Um, just trying to think. And, and you know you could you could just you know ha, um, just think of just basic ideas and uh, keep on moving on instead of wasting your your brain power trying to power through on thinking of what that you're gonna name them. So we'll have a union. We will have a um, an anti-union organization, and perhaps we'll have. Um, Pack infiltration. Because they do, uh, this is a very strategic point in the, in this, uh, in between the two um, empires here. So gaining a hold of Kyre somehow would be very, very, um, would be uh, to an advantage because of the high technology and everything. But they don't want to cause something that will cause, uh, you know, create something that will cause them a war. Uh, so, uh, you know, because they don't want to fight against these guys because it, it is a high tech level. Um, so that's where I'm going with it. As you see, I'm, I'm building ideas and we're oh yeah we're, we're gonna also have to uh cities is 
we will have the uh, transport tubes. A transport tube uh, is like a shuttle that goes up and down uh, the mountain sides here, down below, and comes back up, and usually transits uh, people back and forth. So these will be um, like uh, elongated uh, transports with multi levels, like floors that go up and down. And uh, when they when they reach the top of the uh, you know where the uh, uh, the platforms are here, their platforms are going to be multi-level to match each of the floors on these on these transports. So uh, people will come out. There will be uh, different uh, stair escalators of different forms, you know, going to different levels and stuff like that. So. Um, we're going to keep that in mind, transport, uh, trans system, and uh, multi floor. Um, station. And of course, this all being in pencil, I'm going to replace a lot of this stuff once I come up with words for it. Because um, once again, we're getting into uh, some of the ideas here of utilizing symbols, abstract symbols, and uh, and stuff. So um, this is going to be. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna really uh, utilize a lot of this. Uh, culture and in building the uh, the society of the people here so they are xenophilic so uh, so an attraction to foreign people's customs and cultures so they're gonna be very uh, um, they're gonna absorb a lot of different cultures here so I think they're gonna probably mm, be a very friendly uh, to any kind of outlander uh, like outsider and uh, be very curious so um, is curious uh, takes Customs, cultures. Uh, it's probably going to be rather pre uh, preserving of these, uh, you know, um, people coming in. So it will seem to be more like uh, Canada, I guess, <laughs> where. Uh, um, where if you are going to, I mean, you could be viewed as uh, xenophobic, and that's a bad thing. So, if you're if you're trying to if you're trying to uh, be um, a little upfront about your your own customs and cultures, and uh, and don't abide by everyone's customs and cultures, you could be, you know. Um, expelled from society so maybe we'll have a, a expulsion orders expulsion orders versus xenophobes so being that as a tech as uh, a uh, law level nine that could uh, be rather uh, uh, egregious for the uh, players if they get uh, exposed as such if or if they act in such a way <laughs> it, it can be it can be used as a uh, as a as a trap in certain ways for um, different things where, where you end up you know 
um, having your players negotiate somehow uh, a way out by some sort of settlement or deal uh, in order to avoid the fines or, or being labeled as such. Um, like some sort of branding, maybe some sort of uh, um, brand, uh, some sort of tattoo, which uh, uh, some kind of uh, nano t uh, nano nano tats. So there's going to be uh, nano tats where uh, <laughs> they're they're little nano. Um, Where the nanotechnology attaches to the skin and uh, makes a it makes a pattern, so you have these tattoos, which uh, which would be interesting. Um, see, you're you're coming up with weird stuff um, and symbolism, and this is where the symbolism comes in. So symbols, and this is where you're gonna have the players um, encountering other. Uh, NPCs which have these tattoos which are being disregarded as being uh, outcasts and there's uh, and the players are kind of like why you know when they first encounter this and and uh, and some of them will have uh, tattoos which uh, give them that uh, more austeric um, um, you know roles in uh, in society so they will be uh, viewed more with uh, uh, having more opportunity in the society so maybe there's some sort of uh, you know social credits show credit system there we go kind of like it Canada turned into China. Okay. Um, <laughs> which is which is almost what it is already. Um, mm, let's see. So yeah, we're getting into some pretty interesting ideas here, and you know you could you can. You can leave this as is and go on to something different uh, or just have, uh, you know, go to a different uh, uh, system here and start working on that and filling out stuff while you're brewing up ideas in your head, uh, how you can further make this, this world really, really distinct and interesting. Now, we still haven't gotten into, uh, like, the solar system, so, we'll, I mean, you could... You can get have a, uh, a diagram uh, indicating where where planets are, and uh, you know start working on some ideas about that. Oh yeah, this one has a uh, we do have uh, a planetoid belt. So on the outskirts, you know you're gonna have asteroids and big massive planetoids. So these will uh, have um, areas, which is, once again, the same sort of thing. These uh, people are going to have, you know, the tats and everything. Maybe there's going to be um, factions out here in the Outer Rim, which are against all this kind of stuff going on. So you have that kind of uh, that expanse kind of uh, uh, societies where you have the uh, inners and then the people of the outer and the outers are uh, you know possibly you know charged to go to war with the inners so this could be uh, also infiltrated by the uh, by the pact as well and uh, and you can designate uh, different uh, factions out here so we got outer Factions. Um, which are known as xenophobes to the inners, but they're not xenophobic. They're just labeled that way, where they will accept other people into their, uh, you know, 
know anybody else in their outer but they will not force everybody to do um, the social thing where well where they will have a con common law that everybody abides by no matter what um, their outside uh, beliefs are they must abide by the uh, law of the outers so uh, law of the outer okay so we're, we're coming up with some cool um, ideas that we're cannibalizing from um, possible real-life situations in our uh, world society and um, things that we're gathering from like the expanse idea so there we go um, and we'll also have to name some of these uh, places so on our other page here on our second page we could start drawing a uh, kind of like a diagram of the inner uh, planets and a diagram of all the outer uh, planets as well and uh, start working on them and writing little notes about them too and only only uh, you know because most of the focus is going to be on the main world uh, dedicate this page to a lot of what the uh, what this world holds and uh, what you can work with and what you can bring up and, and, and make very interesting um, in situations and uh, over here and like like I, you know I'm not I'm not writing down any um, anything about uh, job boards or anything here uh, that's gonna come separately so that might be uh, like um, I mean I could include that as a part three or whatever uh, you know and this one this page will be all dedicated to uh, this entire system so we'll have you know uh, the how the belts are laid out the name of the uh, of the planetoids and stuff like that and uh, uh, where the headquarters of the outers is or the secret headquarters of the outers because they're kind of in a, uh, a bit of a um, cold war let's say with uh, with the inners of Kyre and uh, yeah and then once we once you get all that kind of established then you can draw up a, uh, a job board uh, you could have stuff being shuttled from the uh, inner systems here where where our Kyer actually is so Kyer would be here and uh, we'll give some uh, uh, Otis uh, instead of Otis Otis will be a planet out here that uh, that uh, they shuffle uh, they, they uh, shuttle uh, products to say back and forth kind of idea um, and th that could be a job and that could introduce the players to what's going on in the outer factions here and uh, the players decide on how they're gonna uh, who they're gonna side with maybe or if they might say ah oh, we want to stay all out of this uh, but we still have to make friends so in order for us to gain parts in order to uh, fix our ship kind of idea right so uh, they need to make allies uh, they don't want to make a lot of enemies so they might be treading carefully for the first little while until somebody starts uh, picking a side for them which can happen so that's where they start uh, they start taking stock from from the inner to the outus uh, outpost here on this uh, planet or maybe it's uh, it's a uh, station around a gas giant or something like that it could be the situation uh, it's um, you make it up on the fly if you want you know <laughs> I'm making it up on the fly right now and uh, and go from there so uh, then yeah work on a job board so I'll use smaller pieces of paper kind of you know uh, smaller sized pieces that I can clip in here as well same thing 
Um, this is why I like using this system for, for, for my notes. It's easy to drop in pieces of paper and pull them back out if I want to drop in all my planetary notes here. There we go. They're all locked in and uh, they're for safekeeping and uh, they're not going anywhere. Uh, little smaller notes that I make will have, uh, you know, I do a lot of printing, printing my own PDFs where I can uh, make stuff, cut it up into its own individual uh, paper pieces and clip them in and uh, have them consistently, you know, printed out uh, in, a, in a format that I just write down the job, how much they're going to make and blah, 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 and uh, where they're going to gain uh, uh, bonus points for, which faction they are benefiting and which faction they are uh, kind of crossing. So there's going to be a, a benefit and a, uh, a, 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 a dis, what, what, <laughs> some sort of a, uh, uh, what would you call it, uh, um, a not so beneficial relationship. Uh, they would be gaining a, 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 a enmity <laughs> or something, uh, you know, to one side or the other. So. Um, I mean, you could you could build a um, a relationship system here and, and start uh, giving them points for each of the factions as they're uh, encountering them, whether or not they're more friendly towards them or more of an enemy towards them, and you know they start shaping their own destiny in this system, and it goes from there. And then as it gets more and more um, involved and you're seeing where those players are focusing on and listen to your players because your players are going to have ideas and they're going to suggest things as they play. So it's very important that you listen to them um, and take note on what they're coming up with and, and uh, what they're saying and how they're how they're portraying their uh, characters against one faction as opposed to another. And uh, they might say outright how, how they're feeling about each faction, which you know allows you as the game master to kind of tailor the game in a certain way for the next session. So uh, as they're bantering back and forth and and you know you're collecting up these all these little gems and goodies from your players although they don't know it um you are basically writing the ideas down of how other npcs may interact with them later on which would kind of veer them into the you know direction that they want to go so if their plan is to, and they say outright, well, we want to go ahead and purchase a starship. Well, they have to make good with certain factions in order to get that privilege. So uh, you end up having in the back of your mind uh, a plot that would work for the players Although it's not written in stone because, you know, players can do their own thing and figure out their own way in order to uh, create their own um, advantages in the system. And, uh, you know, if they come up with something clever, you know, it, reward them for it. It's, it's awesome for them to come up with some nifty ideas that work out. Um, so that's all I have to say about this Right now, I will probably have a part three um, in where I discuss um, how I um, how I manage player skills in general and working with the players as they do things. Um, it might be something that you might want to consider yourself as well. So. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for tuning in on this. I don't know if this helps you or anything, but maybe it gives you some ideas on how to approach your ideas for uh, creating adventures, uh, hooks and ideas and weird stuff that, that would uh, uh, work well with uh, um, ideas that you're coming up with. Um, like I say, 
gather stuff from different movies, life experiences, and stuff like that. I've done I've done some traveling and that that sort of thing. So um, I've I've experienced some uh, weird things that possibly a lot of you haven't encountered in your lifetime. So um, that's the thing, you know. Bring this in and uh, have some cool stuff uh, created on your papers, your notes and uh go from there see where see where this uh this game leads you so thanks for uh tuning in and uh talk to you guys later subscribe